the weird path of photons, the light that turns on the sun. Mankind and life in general can take place on Earth only because there is light. Otherwise, everything would be dark and cold. Where does the light on Earth come from? Where does it exactly originate from and how? Why is electromagnetic radiation so important for life on Earth? Stick with us and we're going to answer in this video. 1. Light and Electromagnetic Energy on the Earth Light and energy that our sun irradiates are absolutely necessary not only for the human species, but also for all life forms on Earth. The insulation of the Earth's surface regulates climate and most meteorological phenomena, enables the presence of liquid water required for the birth of life, and last but not least, triggers the chlorophyll photosynthesis in plants, needful to the other living beings, to produce the necessary oxygen for their cellular breathing. Photosynthesis stores the thermal energy radiated from the sun in the form of chemical bonds and uses them to synthesize organic compounds, mainly carbohydrates from carbon dioxide and water. Man as well uses energy of the sun, which is stored by structures such as solar panels, adapted for different purposes, such as water heating or the production of electricity by means of photovoltaic panels. Furthermore, the energy stored in oil and in all other fossil fuels derives from the energy radiated by the sun, which has been converted into chemical energy thanks to the photosynthesis of plants that lived millions of years ago. In addition to being an effective antibacterial disinfectant, solar ultraviolet radiation is responsible for tanning and burns due to excessive exposure to the sun, but also has a fundamental role in biology. In fact, it induces synthesis by the skin of the vitamins of group D, essential for the proper calcification of bones. 2. The Sun, Our Star Our Sun is the closest star to the Earth. It is the hub of our solar system and radiates the Earth with light and energy. It's like an immense power plant that produces a huge amount of energy comparing to our terrestrial power plants. The Sun is only 150 million kilometers from the Earth, which is very close, if we only think about that the second closest star is Proxima Centauri, and it is about 4.23 light years from us, about 266,000 times farther away. The electromagnetic energy that the Sun radiates is produced internally thanks to the reactions of nuclear fusion that occur continuously in its core. This is the only region of the Sun in which the nuclear fusion reaction takes place. It is the innermost shell of the Sun and represents 10% of the star in volume and more than 40% in mass. These nuclear fusion reactions are roughly the same as those that humanity has attempted to reproduce for war purposes for the construction of atomic bombs, such as the H-bomb. These types of devices exploit their nuclear fusion reactions where lighter nuclei collide with each other and melt, which give rise to other heavier nuclei. Astrophysicists believe that the solar nucleus has a density greater than 150 times that of water, a temperature of about 13.6 million Kelvin, and a pressure of almost 500 billion atmospheres. To give an idea of the immense pressure, just think that at the deepest point of the Earth's ocean, the pressure is only a little less than 1,100 atmospheres. Here, inside the nuclear furnace, hydrogen nuclei burn and fuse, producing mainly helium nuclei and heavier elements. Every second in the sun, 600 million tons of hydrogen are converted to 595,740,000 tons of helium, but not completely. In fact, less than 1% of hydrogen is transformed into energy, that is, Electromagnetic radiation in accordance with the Einstein equation, E equals mc squared. It is important to point out that the process of nuclear fusion within the sun, like all physical processes involving transformation, takes place in accordance with the law of energy conservation, according to the first principle of thermodynamics, or more simply, according to what the French chemist, biologist, and philosopher Anton Lafosse had already noticed in the 18th century, nothing is created and nothing is destroyed, but everything is transformed. The mechanism of nuclear fusion that feeds the sun is not totally compatible with the principle of conservation of mass and energy. It becomes so thanks to the Einstein equation. Einstein 
is in fact understood and demonstrated that both matter and energy were no longer to be considered as two distinct unitary realities and could be transformed into each other according to the precise mathematical law he discovered. The important thing is that the sum of mass and energy remains constant in the universe. The energy generated by the sun is an immense amount, impossible to reach on Earth. To understand the enormity of this, we can say, by simplifying, that all the electrical power plants of our planet to equal the energy produced by the sun in one second should operate at full capacity for about four and a half million years. Our sun is currently about halfway through its life and is experiencing a phase of stability. It is estimated that it was born about 5 billion years ago and still has 5 billion years to live as we know it. At this stage, the sun is producing energy through the nuclear fusion of hydrogen into helium. Nuclear fusion also causes the star to maintain a state of equilibrium, both hydrostatic and thermodynamic. That is, it does not expand due to the radiation pressure of thermonuclear reactions and does not even contract due to the force of gravity to which it would naturally be subject and maintains an approximately constant temperature. It is estimated that a star like the Sun, considering its mass, takes about 10 billion years to completely burn the hydrogen in its core. By the time the hydrogen in the nucleus is fully converted into helium, in about 5 billion years, the Sun will transform and join another stage of its evolution. In fact, it is going to expand beyond the orbit of Mercury and become a red giant. 3. The Journey of Photons from the Core of the Sun to the Earth So, our Sun, such as all the other stars in the universe, shines by its own light thanks to nuclear fusion reactions which occur in its inner shell and produce light and electromagnetic energy. We all know that light is pure massless energy that travels at a constant speed of 300,000 kilometers per second. It's the fastest thing we know in our universe. As you might have read somewhere, light only takes 8 minutes to cover the distance between the sun and the earth. Yes, that's an insanely short time, considering that we are talking about 150 million kilometers. Now, we all know how long light takes to get from us to the sun. But maybe a question to which only a few people could answer is, how long does light take to escape from the outermost layer of the sun? As a matter of fact, the sun, despite being a medium small star, when compared to other stars far more gigantic in the universe, is still huge compared to the earth. It has a median diameter of about 1.3 million kilometers. It's about 109 times larger than the earth. But anyway, it's quite a shorter path than 150 million kilometers. So we would expect the light to reach the surface in, let's say, a few seconds. Is it? You may be surprised to hear that that estimate is totally wrong. In fact, light takes thousands of years to reach the surface of the sun. The fact is that our sun that we see from the Earth is relatively small. Inside, it is much more gigantic than it seems. Just think that its mass, which amounts to about 2 times 10 to the 30th power kilograms, alone represents 99.86% of the total mass of our solar system and it has a structure much more complex than what it appears. It has, in fact, a well-defined internal structure, which is not directly observable because electromagnetic radiation cannot escape from its inner layers. The first visible layer from which energy from within is free to propagate in space is called the photosphere. The photosphere can be considered a little bit like the surface of the sun, which internally consists of a series of shells with temperature values, variable density pressure, the radiation produced in the nucleus, therefore, runs a much more complex path than one might think. Why does light take so long to reach the surface of the sun? Quantum mechanics during the 20th century has discovered that the light, the electromagnetic radiation in general, is a quantum object. It has a dual behavior. It can be seen as both a particle and as a wave, depending on the physical process involved. At high energy, as in nuclear fusion reactions, processes in the core of the sun. It's useful to consider the radiation as quanta of light, photons that carry packages of electromagnetic energy. Therefore, when these reactions occur, high energy photons are produced.
they are Y, gamma, and X photons, the most energetic ones of the electromagnetic spectrum. However, as we pointed out earlier, in the core, density is extreme. So photons, once are emitted, can travel only a microscopic distance before being captured again by surrounding atoms. When atoms capture our photons, they absorb them in the form of energy. This event gets them into a particular excited state produced by the photon energy absorbed. Therefore, they will de-excite very soon, re-emitting another photon in random directions. And this new photon isn't going to have a long life either. In fact, its destiny is exactly the same as the initial one. It is going to travel a very short distance before being absorbed by other atoms. This process continues several thousands of times, and as the photons move towards the outer layers of the sun, the density of matter decreases, and photons are able to travel longer and longer distances before being absorbed by atoms. Moreover, as density decreases, photons emitted are less and less energetic, and the correspondent radiation assumes a longer and longer wavelength, passing from the Y-band to the X-band to the ultraviolet band. And when photons finally get to the photosphere, the outermost layer of the sun, they are mainly emitted as pure visible light. If we could watch the photon during this travel, we would see a very chaotic track going randomly up, down, left, right, and changing direction all the time. In fact, it does not follow any particular direction at all. By contrast, if the photon could go straight to the surface, it would take only less than three seconds to reach it. It's for this reason that radiation takes a very long time to reach the surface of the star, so that a photon, to reach the photosphere, takes between 10,000 and 170,000 years. Isn't that weird? Think about it. Thousands of years to escape the sun in just a few minutes to reach the Earth. Is there something more you want to know about photons and their journey through the universe? Drop a line below and let us know what you think.